The first speaker today is Megan Bradway. Bradway's research interest goes from diabetes and social media, user involvement, and to the inclusion of citizens and patients in research. Megan Bradway holds a PhD and works as a postdoc here at eHealth Research. Megan, I'll give the word to you. Thank you so much, Annan, for a very welcoming introduction. So I will be presenting um, as part of a project called WARIFA, or Watching the Risk Factors. Um, we, in this EU project, we aim to develop an AI um, solution that identifies uh, risk factors for four different chronic conditions and provides tailored um, feedback to the users. Uh, we are also, um, this work is also sponsored by the um, a project that looks at study administration uh, techniques used within research. So the concept of using social media in research to identify groups that are uh, what we're going to be calling seldom heard is relevant for both projects. So this review was prompted by the state of underrepresentation of certain groups within health and technology research. So uh, some statistics, uh, actually one article from the British Journal of General Practice uh, sums this up nicely as um, what is the problem? What is the reason that certain groups are underrepresented in trials? Now, this may be planned or inadvertent exclusion from the side of the, the researchers. It could be non-participation from the side of the individuals, or it could be a mix of both. And we have to consider that words have weight. Uh, in this uh, a quotation from this article uh, that really speaks to this problem is that stereotypical and negative attitudes of researchers have the potential to shape decisions to recruit members of minority ethnic groups, as well as under other under-researched um, groups. So we performed a literature review to understand the scope of this situation. So the, the main question was, who are described as underserved or seldom heard or any of these other terms that you see on this slide? Um, and why do the researchers consider them to be those labels? So we, um, we included articles from the past 20 odd years. Uh, with the most important inclusion criteria being that they recruited these seldom heard groups for active participation. So it's not just reviewing their clinical records, it's actually involving them in the research process. Uh, as So that, that's part of a larger literature review, scoping review. Um, but for this presentation, I wanted to focus on the mention of social media within these studies. So we included articles um, from PubMed, Medline, Web of Science, and there were 4,750 of them, which is not a small feat to, to go through. But a uh, quick search for social media terms um, revealed 96. Now, we included the uh, articles that described studies um, that either use social media for recruitment, the intervention itself, or data collection. And there were 55 that targeted a seldom heard group and used social media for these purposes. Now, who are these people? The people who are considered uh, seldom heard turned out to be the majority are sexual minorities, uh, those living in specific, a specific country or a community that is perhaps deprived of um, medical access or medical services. Uh, we have ethnic minorities, um, as well as uh, specific age groups, et cetera. Um, so this is just a, a diagram of um, who, who are included. And I didn't want to exclude um, certain groups from this presentation just because there were only a few mentions. The point is to highlight who are these individuals, what causes them to be seldom heard, and how we can use social media to reach them. So why are they seldom heard? 
Uh, one of the main reason, reasons was barriers to accessing or utilizing healthcare. Now, these are external reasons such as um, public awareness. Uh, there's a limited supply often in certain deprived communities uh, of, of healthcare solutions. Um, outreach to specific groups, uh, especially those living in remote areas, is costly or inefficient. Um, and one of the more external internal reasons is a distrust of healthcare providers. Um, one of the reasons being, uh, sorry, one of the reasons being uh, a concern that the healthcare providers would judge them based on their own identity. Uh, more internal um, reasons included being unengaged in health, in their own health or healthcare. Um, they don't typically seek help. They don't. Um, they don't uh, receive uh, adequate uh, screening for cancers, for example, or they're less likely to use specific health services. But it, I, I would like to point out that this reason for not being, or for being a seldom heard group, was noted about one third the times, um, three times less than uh, for the previous reason of limited access to healthcare. So it's not as much of a concern or it's not as much of a barrier as a lot of people think. Uh, from the research side, there the one of the main reasons is that it is difficult to recruit or retain these groups for research. It is very um, resource and energy expensive for researchers to not just use um, their collaboration with a healthcare facility to recruit patients or um, newspaper articles to recruit patients, more traditional routes. Um, so it does take a lot, a lot of uh, time and energy in order to continuously engage these groups. One of the other things is that uh, we lack quality evidence to guide us um, in the research recruitment. And then the final reason that I wanted to mention, there are many more, but these are the four main reasons that I wanted to highlight, um, is marginalization or stigmatization by society. So social stigma uh, may also lead to them not trusting uh, healthcare providers or researchers, um, multiple marginalized identities, the, the labels that stick them into groups that are labeled as hard to reach, which is a very judgmental term. So that's why we're trying to use the term seldom heard. So the social media that was used to recruit these groups, um, the, the most common was, was just a summary of social media, um, followed by, uh, they used Facebook quite often. And between one and three times, uh, or one in three, one to three articles used uh, Grindr, Craigslist, uh, Twitter, WhatsApp, Instagram, and Reddit. Social media used for the intervention itself, the most common was Facebook, uh, followed by social media and WhatsApp, YouTube, and Zoom were only used in uh, one study each. Social media that was used for data collection, the most common was just social media. Uh, followed by Facebook and Twitter, which were just used once. So which social media groups were used for which seldom heard groups? So the first is individual, or the most common was individuals at risk for or within health parameters or with a specific condition. Uh, they used Twitter, the general term social media, Facebook, and Craigslist. Uh, followed by sexual minorities, which used uh, WhatsApp, social media, Instagram, Grindr, and Facebook. Uh, those living in a specific community used um, WhatsApp, social media, Grindr, and Facebook. Uh, specific age groups used, this was the only group to use Zoom, I believe, uh, as well as um, WhatsApp, social media, yeah, you can read. Um, ethnic minorities primarily relied on, or researchers primarily relied on social media and Facebook to reach out to ethnic minorities. Um, 
and researchers used Twitter, general social media, Facebook, and Craigslist to reach women. So the takeaways that I wanted to highlight are that we have to understand who is not represented in order to, so we need to take a step back before we can move forward with the, the digitization of, of health, the development of technology, so that we don't increase the digital divide that is already there. So we need to, we need to be aware that history plays a role there are groups who have been mistreated in research in the past, and that does affect their perceptions of research in the health system today. And no one solution is going to fit everybody. We, we've, heard that, um, we've heard that before in, in health. That's why tailored health has become such a popular concept. The same is true for these seldom heard groups. We need to get creative. And we need to involve them in every step of the process, asking for their experiences and limiting our assumptions on why they are unengaged or why they are not reached in healthcare today. Also involving community organizations as well as healthcare services when we perform these studies, the community, are, the community organizations are those who interact with a greater diversity of individuals on a daily basis. So partnering with them can help us better understand the needs of these groups as well as how to reach them. Thank you, that is the end of my presentation. And we're actually developing a network who are interested, of researchers who are interested in continuing the discussion of, sell, of recruiting seldom heard groups into research. So if you are interested, uh, please email me. My email is right there or the organizers of this um, open days. So thank you so much.